Good morning. This is Christ the King Sunday, and the sermon is Beginning at the End. Of all the names we think of when we hear the word king, one of the first that comes to mind is Arthur. There are many tales of King Arthur and his knights at the round table, and in them he ranges from brave to jealous to slightly mad. For Disney fans, though, you may think of the sword in the stone. The movie based off the book of the same name, the first book in a series of novels by T.H. White called The Once and Future King. The story goes a little like this. Once there was a king named Arthur, long before he came king. In fact, when he was just an infant in the cradle, a strange thing happened. The nurse stepped out for a moment and quick as a wink, Merlin the magician stepped in and then stepped out again, taking the boy with him. But this was not a kidnapping. Merlin was a kindly old magician, and his commission was to let the boy grow up not a spoiled, pampered royal, but a normal person. He was not to be miles above the animals and the people and the tiny precious specks of beauty that the most surprising place that live in the most surprising places of our lives. He was to live with us. Sound familiar? So Merlin transported Arthur to a bedraggled castle ruled by a third state lord named Exer Ector. The people were nice enough and ordinary. All the servants were his friends and they called him Wart. This telling of Arthur reminds me of Jesus. It seems that Jesus had a few things in common with the Wart. Jesus was not called King or Your Highness as a boy any more than Wart was referred to as Your Majesty. This one was called Jesus, a common name in those days. He played outside, helped his dad, rolled in the mud, argued with his siblings, and his mom was his very most favorite person in the world, probably. We don't really know much about Jesus' upbringing, but through the context clues of scripture, we can gather that Jesus received no special treatment as he grew from baby to toddler to child to teen to adult. Certainly not as he wandered throughout the land as an adult. But Jesus did grow up to be the kind of king he was meant to be. A new image of a king. But a king nonetheless. His love was not just for the noble and the mighty, but for everyone. Pilate asked Jesus if he was king. The answer was yes, but not in a way that Pilate could imagine. Humility was his power. Love was his scepter. Forgiveness, his crown. Christ, the kind king, that's who we're seeing this day. When Pilate asked Jesus about his claims to kingship, Jesus does not speak about having a kingdom. The kingdom of which he speaks is not of this world. It is hugely different from the might of Rome and the power of Caesar. Jesus' king is on Jesus's kingdom is a, a of a different order and gets its authority from a higher throne. His kingdom is no less than God's kingdom. God's kingdom is not established through violence and control like the many kingdoms of this world. It does not exploit or suppress those in its power. Jesus will not fight against those who arrest him because his kingdom <clears throat> is inaugurated through sacrifice and its power is the power of selfless love. Jesus' kingdom is truly not of this world. Jesus is the king who comes not to be served but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is a king who humbles himself and becomes poor, taking the lowest place such that we might be made rich in him and exalted to the highest place. This kingdom, unlike the kingdoms of this world, will endure forever because its foundations are eternal and its authority flows from the very throne of God. This is our kingdom. This is our kind King, Jesus. It seems odd to be talking about this King of Kings right before the lead up to Advent, we are beginning at the end, it would seem, which we gather from our Revelations reading is appropriate. The Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the end and the beginning. Jesus' kingship, the was and the coming, the original and the final. 
Over the next four weeks, we are going to take a journey into the birth of Christ. And as the popular Christmas hymn, O Holy Night, goes, Fall on your knees. Hear the angel voices. O night when Christ was born. Fall on your knees, for that is what we do before a king. Fall on your knees before a God whose love comes to us in delicate, unprotected, unarmed, defenseless flesh to live among us. Fall on your knees before the one who loves without caution, without measure, without concern for pre-existing conditions. Fall on your knees for the one who submitted to the very worst humans are capable of, who let the twisted thing in us, the thing in us capable of betrayal and flogging and violence and vengeance and even murder and didn't say, I'm going to get you back, but said, you are forgiven. Fall on your knees because we are out of solutions here. We hear and feel and see injustices every day. Christ's kingdom is not of this world's values. Thank you, God, for that. Christ the King has a crown of thorns and sits on a throne of a cross so that we may enter into a life more complete, one where a relationship with God is a reality. Amen.